There's probably nothing that's been more important, uh, certainly in my life personally, and I know so many of you that listen to this show's lives over the last several years, um, well, really in the last year or two, uh, what we've learned about what's going on in our kids' education. And you would think that's something, uh, and I'll just own it for myself, you would think that is something that uh, my wife, who is a former teacher, and and something that I, as a, I'd like to think a responsible adult parent, would, would be more honed in on. But it was really COVID, we've said this a lot, it was COVID that kind of changed the dynamic of everything and caused us to all start to really dial in and focus in in a way that maybe we hadn't before. Now, I know there are a lot of you in this audience that had been homeschooling. I know there are a lot of you that had pursued Christian education for your kids. Um, that, that wasn't the course that my wife and I had originally sought. And my wife being a public educator, my mother was, um, we just didn't assume that there were the problems that we ultimately ended up discovering. And as you know, uh, we put our youngest daughter in a Christian school this fall. And since then, I've had the pleasure of making connection with a lot of folks in the arena of Christian education, people that are either starting schools or foundations that are interested in supporting Christian education. The latter is the focus of today's interview. I had the privilege of making the acquaintance of the Herzog Foundation, They're based in Smithville, Missouri. This is a new organization uh, funded and, I guess, founded in part by the late, great uh, Stan Herzog, uh, a guy that I knew, uh, in full disclosure, and was uh, sort of a a mutual friend of a friend. I didn't know him intimately well, but I know that he had a heart and a passion for Christian education, and he left behind a tremendous legacy to build on and uh, help others now get into the arena of Christian education the gentleman who is uh, ostensibly in charge of the Herzog Foundation, the president of that foundation, is Reverend Daryl Jones, and he joins me today. And uh, Reverend, I'm so glad to have you on the show, first of all. Thanks for coming on. Chris, it is a pleasure to be here to talk about Christian education and the state of affairs of education in the country, and, and certainly to talk about the Herzog Foundation. People that are listening to us from other parts of the country uh, may not know a lot about uh, Mr. Herzog, may not know much about the Herzog Foundation and the legacy there and what you're starting. It's new, so maybe even people in your own backyard don't always know about it. But what's important is I want everybody all across the country to know about this foundation, so please enlighten us. Well, I appreciate that so much. Uh, Mr. Herzog made a, a good living. Uh, in light rail. Uh, Honestly, uh, he he had a number of things. It was a a company that started with building roads and asphalt roads and continued to do that. But uh, he did very well with shipping containers and and honestly, light rail. If your community has a light rail system, Stan Herzog probably had a piece in that. By the way, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you can bet that Stan Herzog would have plenty to say about the the current situation with the supply chain where he's still with us, don't you imagine? You know, I think he would have a number of comments <laughs> on a number of topics. Yeah, right. yeah. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Go ahead, please. No, that's that's great. And so, yeah, as you said, uh, Christian education was very important to, to Stan. Uh, his uh, his two children both graduated K-12 through in, in Christian school in, in St. Joseph, Missouri. And uh, he saw the benefit of that. And on a number of levels, he was uh, certainly concerned about the public school system, but really wanted his fortune to go to be a catalyst across the country to uh, to to drive people, uh, create a movement toward Christian education. So whether it's Christian schools or whether it's homeschool or learning pods or micro schools, uh, he he just believed that that really was a necessary component to the future of of society in America. And uh, so we have we have set off with that mission to be a catalyst for a movement toward Christian education across the country and uh, and are looking at ways in which we can uh, make Christian schools that already exist stronger. I mean, we're doing a lot of trainings for boards, for for development directors. We've got a great uh, co- couple of conferences coming up in November and December. And here's what's unique about what we're doing, Chris. Every, every conference that we put on is free of charge to the school that's attending. And so you get to, for example, the one we're doing in, in uh, November. By the way, HerzogFoundation.com, H-E-R-Z-O-G Foundation.com. You can see all of the initiatives that we're doing as well as our calendar for events that are upcoming. But uh, you get to Dallas in mid-November for a two-day conference boot camp on donor development We'll put you up at the Marriott. 
we'll feed you, we'll bring in the speakers. We, we are on a mission to make existing Christian schools stronger, in addition to creating more Christian schools that are financially sustainable, different yes. business models in different parts of the country, different, different uh, demographics. So, so not just in suburban areas, but in urban areas and rural areas. And so, you know, as broad as your audience is, we have initiatives that we would love to help put kids into Christian schools uh, in, in, in all regions of the country. We just met. It's funny. We're having this conversation just last night. Uh, my wife and I met over the kitchen table of a gentleman who is spearheading a, uh, a capital campaign to help grow and add on to uh, the Christian school that my daughter now currently attends. And, sure. and uh, th- there's been a generous gift, actually, from the Herzog Foundation to that school to, to help mm-hmm. with that campaign. That's what you Great. do. So um, I, I know you can't fulfill every single request, but um, to be clear, not only do you help steer and guide these things, I mean— it, that, that's so important. It's one thing to just hand somebody a check and say, here, um, we're donating some money to help your school. But to your point, right. this meeting that I had last night, this gentleman and I and my wife were talking about, um, it, you have to understand that it, it's almost, it's, it does take money and it takes organization right. and it, and it takes a constant, uh, flow of money. It's not a one-time gift. And if you don't know what right. you're, it, it is a business, I mean, it is a business right. Christian education and you have to run it as such. You have to learn how to do yeah. that if you don't know. Yeah, it's really true, and, and and oftentimes with anything, you know, people uh, people with passion, for, you know, in the in the in the trenches, just need some good understanding of of good business principles and cash flow and those kinds of things that we really feel like as a foundation we can bring in experts in the field and give just fantastic training to heads of schools to boards, to the administrative teams, the marketing people, the development people, and even to teachers, uh, you know, personal development for teachers to make them that much more effective in, in Christian classrooms. Daryl Jones is with us. Uh, he pastored a large church, by the way, in St. Joseph, Missouri, for over 30 years. He has a daily podcast, I should mention, too, called The Morning Routine, which is a daily devotional podcast for parents and educators and leaders. He's with the Herzog Foundation. Um, if there are people listening to me, um, for instance, in uh, in Pennsylvania, where I've called home for the last decade, uh, my daughter was about to uh, enroll in what was a brand new school there before we decided to make the move back to Missouri. Um, it was literally, and when I say Daryl, it, it was a brand new school. These, these folks, I mean, my daughter would have been one of, I think, maybe 15 uh, who would have kicked off this fall? Wonderful people, wow. huge, heart, uh, heart for Christ. Uh, I love yeah. what they were doing, but it was. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, my wife and I had long talks and lots of prayer and a candid conversation mm-hmm. with our middle schooler. This is not yeah. the school you're used to. This is not hundreds. This is not thousands. This is 15 kids, and we're kind of jumping off a cliff and we're kind of trying something new. It's daunting, and a lot of parents listening to us think, "I wouldn't mind putting my son or daughter in a Christian school, but..." It's so small, and I'm nervous about their experience, and does that yeah. school know what it's doing, and will their quality of education suffer? What would you say about that to parents? What a, what a great question. I would say look at the statistics. Look at the reports of how Christian school students fare in Christian school, and, and homeschool for that matter, compared to the outcome of the public school system. And I think the, the, the numbers reveal for themselves the quality of education. We just did a nationwide survey and found that uh, 80% of Christian families are, are, are pleased, thrilled with the education that their children are getting in their classroom. We also surveyed the same number of public school parents who it didn't fare as well. Uh, just over 50% of public school parents were pleased with what's going on at the classroom. And so, you know, when you just look at the statistics, every educator will tell you smaller class size is better for the student's education. And so, you know, what can appear to be a liability is in fact a real asset to the child that's a part of a smaller classroom. Have you noticed, Reverend, have you noticed that the the era of COVID this last couple of years that has been so politically tumultuous? I mean, the country's been politically tumultuous for a while, but sure. the last two years it's been white hot. 
have, have you seen, uh, I don't know if you have any statistical data or if it, I mean, certainly anecdotally, I've seen what, what seems to be a massive shift away from public school and a real growth or interest, at least at bare minimum, in, in Christian education. Oh, absolutely. You know, just this week, there was a, an interesting article of all places from the New York Times that was recognizing the amazing increase in Christian schools of enrollment across the country as compared to the decline in public schools. I mean, I think what happened in COVID, as, as you teed it up so well, uh, just really brought parents to the reality of what's taking place in the classroom. And on one hand, it was masking or not masking that caught everybody's attention. But then they started seeing what's going on in the classroom. And uh, I mean, what's leading the story uh, on the news every night is another parents group that's really at odds with the school district in their district. And the school districts aren't budging. I mean, they're moving forward and, and you know, Parents are going to have a voice in their kids' education, and, uh, and I, think, I think that's why you're seeing the incredible enrollment. It's been said, this is a once-in-100-year event, mm. a, a seismic shift that's taking place in uh, the enrollment in Christian schools and, and the decline of, of public education enrollment. And really, it's the education system that has brought this on themselves. And, and if I may, uh, theologically— uh, divert for a second. I was just in sure. wor- uh, worship a couple of weeks ago when our pastor said something I thought really pretty profound. He said, "Listen, as Christians, uh, we sh- he wasn't discouraging uh, political engagement. He mm-hmm. said, but but let's be candid. Uh, the country has changed. It shifted, and uh, the, our influence, if you want to call it influence or what have you, that whole kind of notion of the moral majority and you've got to win the evangelical vote that is waned. And he's yeah. and he said, and I hadn't thought of it this way." He said, I'm not so sure it's a bad thing if only because it now forces the church to focus on itself and to make sure we're right with Christ and the word. Mm-hmm. And and so there is a there's a fundamental I've I've said this before, culturally, our institutions, our schools, our churches, yeah. I think everybody's kind of looking inwardly now and assessing where are we, which is probably not inherently a bad thing, Reverend. No, I would agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, I my my wife and I have three daughters. We now have eight grandchildren. And uh, all of my all of my daughters, as well as my wife and I, graduated K through 12 from the public school system. When our first grandchild was born eight years ago, just you know, at that point, pastoring a church in a in 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 my hometown, and and seeing the things that are going on in the school system, I said to my wife, "I pray that every one of our grandkids attends a Christian school, because even eight years ago, you could begin seeing this shift and this emboldened, uh, you know, where my faith." is now not not only not embraced it's not even tolerated because i i hold to biblical values you know and i think you know the kids that are growing up children growing up in in this environment uh the the, the question that the parents and grandparents need to be asking is who is raising our children yeah is it people who share our values or is it people who who are intolerant of our values hostile to our values. Isn't that it? That's, I, you know, Pastor, that is the thing that stuns me is I, I naively for a long time was comfortable with the notion of, listen, I'll handle my kids' spiritual upbringing through Sunday mm-hmm. school, through worship. I'll handle that. I'll send them to school and, and they'll get, you know, I, 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 and I used to think to myself, I guess, subconsciously, well, I don't need to worry about yeah. any, uh, any kind of spiritual influences at school. Mm-hmm. I'll handle that at home. What I didn't mm-hmm. anticipate, though, was that there would be openly hostile, aggressive counter programming and counter messaging to what we believe privately in the house in their school systems? I, that's what I didn't count on, and I'm just waking yeah. up to. I'm sorry to say. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know that any of us counted on that. There was a may, there was a day in American history where parents raised their kids clearly in the values of the home, and then as the farms became bigger and as as industry began to develop, communities would say, hey, listen, you know, like Little House on the Prairie, we're going we're gonna to send our kids, and, and you, Judy, why don't you teach the kids there at the, at the one-room schoolhouse? But Judy was a part of our community, and she shared our values. Mm-hmm. In 2021, who is the person, who is the entity, what, what, is, what are the values of the government that is raising our kids? I mean, that's a very real dilemma 
that that parents are facing today. And that's where the Herzog Foundation really wants to come in and say, how can we help give parents options? And where there are Christian schools, what can we do to leverage our resources to make those schools stronger? And, and where there are not viable, affordable options for Christian students, what can we do to create new schools with different economic models that are sustainable, that give more kids opportunity for Christian school, K through 12 across the country. So let me ask you, in closing here, Daryl Jones, who's the uh, the president of the uh, Herzog <laughs> Foundation out of uh, Smithville, Missouri, um, their focus is accelerating teaching, uh, growing K through 12 education in a Christ-centered environment. And uh, so for people that are listening, wherever they may be listening, people that are thinking about, let's, let me, let me first, I guess I'd ask you, I'll run a few scenarios. Talk to me about that little Christian school that's just starting. Maybe I've got an administrator or a parent that's just getting involved in a Christian school that's kind of small and maybe they're a little nervous. Maybe they don't know where their funds are coming from or what the future holds. What would you say to them first? I would say HerzogFoundation.com. We have got a number of resources. I mean, we're we're less than a year old. I was the first hire on January one, uh, but we are we, we've got a staff of ten, and we are rolling out initiatives. And we have got some some initiatives that we have taken on, really really vetted well with experts across the country who've coached us in developing certainly trainings that can take you uh, to a new level as an administrator, as a teacher, as a fundraiser, as a marketing, as you're trying to get your message out about your school. We just want to come alongside you and not take the reins of your school. You're in charge of it, but here's some resources that we can hand to you to, to help make you stronger. And so for smaller schools, that is that is certainly uh, certainly the case. Uh, a number of, uh, a couple of conferences that are coming up even this year yet, our building's not finished yet, but we're, we're, we're already putting the conferences together and going to going to pull them off. In fact, Kansas City is already sold out and Dallas, Texas is nearly sold out. But wow. if you go to HerzogFoundation.com, you can you can click on the link in 2022. Uh, we're, we're basically once we get into our new building, uh, the last three quarters of the year, we're looking at having holding a conference every other week. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, and we're only going to build on that. I mean, we, it's we, we want to be a catalyst for a movement toward Christian education. And so, uh, you know, HerzogFoundation.com, I would say for families that are really considering, is this for us? Is this the kind of thing that we want to do? That was my next question, we, because yeah, I have a lot we, of parents that are thinking about it, Pastor, but haven't yeah, done it yeah, yet, and they're not and sure how to feel to about make it. The decision. Yeah. We, we, we put together, it started in August, we've got over 100,000 subscribers to ReadLion.com. And the Lion is basically an online publication that daily is adding content, that if it's going on in education or Christian education, we're reporting on it. And here's what's going on. And it's really making the case that there are alternatives that are affordable and accessible to the, to the public school system. There are, there are alternatives. And uh, really making the case, obviously, at the Herzog Foundation, we're focused on Christ-centered Christian education. But we're, we're reporting on everything that's going on in education across the country. And, and again, uh, readlion.com is where you can find the lion, a bold voice really for alternatives, uh, including Christian education. So herzogfoundation.com, and uh, you, that, that, that is a great uh, kind of a starting point if you're either um, thinking about uh, a Christian education for your kids or you're already involved in the Christian education scene uh, and you want some more guidance or input, that's a great resource. I am... Uh, I'm thrilled to be sort of loosely friendly with your organization, and I hope to become more <laughs> formally friendly with your organization hey, in the future, listen, Pastor. Well, I'd love to give you a tour of the place, and maybe you know, maybe we'll have you on one of our podcasts as well, Chris. I'd this be honored, and, and we're going to stay in touch because I know there are lots of parents all over the country that are uh, hungry for this information right now. So thank you for what you're doing there at the foundation. Well, it's a, it's a real blessing and a pleasure for sure, and really uh, praying that God will use this. Uh, the Holy Spirit will open doors to really be transformative in Christian education across the country. Daryl Jones, and by the way, his podcast, Morning Routine, a daily devotional for a podcast. I assume that's wherever podcasts are available, Pastor, yes? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wonderful being with you this morning. And that'll wrap it up for today's show, folks. 